Hey everyone, my name is Ruin. We're here, and this is gonna be week number three, I believe, of the UPBA. And as I'm doing this, I'm kind of compressing a whole bunch of games into one week. My first three games are being all played very, very close to each other. I'm trying to get ahead as quickly as possible, but at the same time, uh, it is kind of rushing my builds a little bit. I did actually accidentally reset my browser settings really briefly before this, so I had to recreate my team in a couple minutes. But I'm pretty positive that I got everything that I intended to do here. Hopefully, I didn't make any mistakes, but I'm also really excited just to get into it. This is a really, really tough matchup. But let's see, we will see the Conkelder. Can Kelder Zerkatree, Beer Skuda, uh, no Latios, or no Latios, yeah, no, no Latios, Clefable, Gastrodon, and Skarmory. So again, no Latios, no Rotom, no Rotom is huge. No Cryogono, no Trevenant, and no Drapion. These are very interesting. That actually means that my Porygon should outspeed his entire team outside of the Verascuta. Obviously, my default lead has kind of been the Coco here, and I think I kind of do want to lead off with that. It does make the most sense to me. Uh, yeah, I think I could do this pretty safely i wouldn't be surprised at all for a skarmory lead and it honestly kind of makes me want to lead off with my Santa scorch but maybe not in this case it does have some lead options circuitry is a really obvious um lead option but for right now clefable is a really solid lead option but yeah for right now i'm just gonna get into it we will definitely see whatever the heck he brings here but I'm gonna pull up the Coco. I would expect, if I do see the Skarmory, they'd want to go into the Gastrodon right away. And if that is the case, then we will be able to tell a bunch about the Gastrodon on a turn one U-turn. Oh, leads off with this thing right away. That's incredibly interesting. I don't know what he expected. I don't know what he expected. Maybe maybe expected my 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 Sand Slash. But regardless, I think I U-turn out every time. I think I U-turn out every time. He could go, er, Earthquake turn one. If so, I think that allows in my... My... Bird. Zapdos. And then I can U-turn again, get him into the Vortex a little bit. He might go into the Skarmory. Maybe it's Rocky Helmet. Those would be unfortunate. But at the end of the day, I think we start kind of doing what we need to do here. If anything, if he does go back into the Skarmory, then, um, yeah, that's especially defensive as heck. That's especially defensive as heck. And he can tell that I'm Bandit as well. But he could be Rindo Berry, that's for sure, for sure. But given the fact that this thing is... Goes for a Toxic turn one. Okay. I mean, as far as things go, that's not the worst thing in the world. But this does allow me to just click U-turn. I would, I would expect the Skarmory to want to come in. Um, regardless, I think I just take this opportunity every time. I don't know. Maybe, maybe the Bear Scoot is worth it in this scenario. But this will bring down the Gastron pretty low and yeah it does withdraw I don't think he had really much to hit this thing especially after the toxic it does go directly into the Skarmory and this will break sturdy which will mean that my Coco does threaten it a decent amount actually actually after leftovers that was a crit um after leftovers okay no it's Rocky Helmet so that should actually mean Uh, I'm going to assume that this thing is just as defensive as, as it can be. And actually, Volt Switch doesn't quite get me there. Volt Switch doesn't quite get me there. But Wild Charge does. Wild Charge does, which is interesting to me. That's super interesting to me. Um, hmm. He could go back into the Gastrodon. But knowing that I could U-turn... I'll just click wild charge. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. If he makes if he makes the super aggressive play into the Gastrodon, knowing that I can do another 40-ish percent and pretty much kill this thing with, with with a sneeze, then he called me out on this play. What can I say? But if I do get big banded wild charge damage off on something, even if it's not just a straight up KO on the Skarmory, then obviously that's huge in this scenario. Does withdraw. Does do we see the Gastrodon? We do. Okay. I mean, again, I could have done a clean 40 to this thing. I think... Hmm. Uh, 
I don't quite know what to do here. Hmm. Maybe maybe I do this. Hmm. Yeah, I really don't quite know what to do here. I probably just have to make this play regardless. I probably just have to make this play regardless. I'm very surprised that the Skarmory stayed in, but it put me in a pretty awkward position here. Let's show the recover. That's fair. That's totally fair. And at this point, I think I probably just double into the Coco without you turning. Maybe. Maybe I make a different double? I could do this. No, I think I no, I think I do this regardless. I think I do this regardless. I mean, this is risky because again, he could well, he would never earthquake into this thing. I don't think. Toxic would be a really bold play. Yeah, yeah, I think we just figure something out eventually, right? Goes for another recover. That's totally fair. That's totally fair. He could just recover again on the following on this following turn. But I think if anything, this time I U-turn into I U-turn into Porygon and try to hit this thing as hard as I can. Because now that I have some idea of what this Gastrodon is, actually I could go into this. I really don't want to get toxic though. That would be pretty bad. I think, yeah. If anything, I make this play. Uh, let's so let's see here. Oh, goes for the Scald now. Super interesting play. But yeah, now I can get a Specs try attack off. It's very interesting that I didn't pack Thunderbolt on this thing. I mean, I mean that must have been just like a thing that I changed when I was um, shuffling around some sets. But Specs try attack should pick up a KO? Question mark. If it did that, it'd be huge. Ooh, that's rough. But actually, that's. Um, I should, I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong, it looks like a super dirty roll on a follow-up one, but I should do, I should do no less than 52%, which should be huge. Even if the Skarmory does want to come in, I think the Skarmory is super defensive. And not to say that I'm going to two-hit, maybe I do, maybe I don't, but actually I do two-hit the Skarmory. He doesn't really have a switch into this, other than... Arguably can Kelder, which he'd be forced to mock punch. I could go into Coco. I could start to make some things happen there. Um, but yeah, he does not have a good switch into this at all. He knows that I'm a Specs, but at this point, I don't even really think it particularly matters. Yeah, gives him, gives me this thing. He's probably gonna want to go into the can Kelder. I would imagine. Maybe maybe not. I don't know. Um, he has options. I'd be very curious. I, I, I want to pull up as soon as it comes out, whatever the heck he brings out. Because... Uh, if he brings out the Skarmory, the Skarmory could body press. Yeah, body press would would KO me for sure, for sure. So I probably have to make some play around that. Goes into the Conkelder, okay. I can potentially go into my... my sand slash because my sand slash is honestly just here for was just here for the drapeon in particular but now it really doesn't have the biggest of roles here so i think i can make this play he might honestly go for a rock move thinking that that my that i'm trying to uh bring in send a scorch here but no i think if anything i think if i bring this in i have to pull a double somewhere I probably double into Coco, maybe. That's for a close combat straight up. Doesn't do the most to me. But I think this is an opportunity. No, it's not. I think I double into Coco every time. 100 out of 100 times. It's not a play that I particularly want to make, but I think I kind of have to here. Um. 
Or I could go into the Santa Scourge. No, I think I do this. I think I do this. Santa Scorch's role in general is now very interesting. Um, every time I switch out first, I get nervous, but no, um, I should be faster regardless, so I think I'm okay here. Could Ice Punch, I guess? No, that, do uh, that doesn't seem the most likely. Maybe I Break Bird if he wants to give me... He goes for another close combat. That's super interesting. That's super interesting. Um, oh, because of the flame orb, I didn't clock that in my head, actually. Um, but I think... Do I take... A burned mock punch? Do I take a burned mock punch? Um... With Coco, I should... Yeah, I should always take a burned mock punch. So I think I click Volt Switch. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. If we see the Skarmory, yeah, I, th I, th I think he's trying to get the the. Oh no, okay. I think he was trying to get me to go down to, to my own recoil. But in this scenario, in this scenario, I probably go into this thing. Question mark. I could Fire Lash repeatedly, kind of wear down the team a little bit. Um, just based on that damage, I did about a quarter to, to Clefable. I did a, right around a quarter to Clefable. Uh, yeah, that's actually right in line for max defense, which actually means that I think I threaten another KO with Tri-Attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I just straight up threaten another KO with Tri-Attack here. I probably do have to start sacking to the Kinkelder eventually, but we're not at that point yet. We're not at that point yet. And actually, that that little bit of recovery genuinely does kind of uh, complicate things, but I don't think you would want to give up this much HP on this thing this early. And I don't think uh, recovering makes the whole uh, the most sense. And yeah, I just think he has to give something up to this. Porygon. Okay. Okay. That's not quite a KO, but we do get a burn, which doesn't matter, but uh does go for a teleport. Okay. Okay. Very interesting. Kinkelja could come in. I could bring in... I could honestly bring in the Zapdos, because Zapdos is kind of my most expendable mod at this point, right? It's kind of my most expendable mod at this point. Having the Clefable take that much damage is just wild. But yeah, that, that pretty much confirms max offensive. Goes into Zergatry. Now this leads me to believe that the Zergatry is Scarfed. And... If the Zerk Tree is Scarfed... If the Zerk Tree is Scarfed... Then I could potentially pivot with... This thing. Hmm. Okay, I, I, I mean, I guess we'll just follow this where, wherever it leads. Yeah, it does go for the Energy Ball. This does give me the opportunity to pivot and get a Fire Lash off. Which is going to be big. And as long as I can keep my Sand Slash and my Sand Scorch on, on board, he's always going to have a lot of trouble with this thing. With a combination of the two. Could bring in... Yeah, stacks off the table, that's totally fair. That's totally fair. That will invite in Berskuda, maybe? Maybe... Skarmory? No. K 
can counter. Um, no, it goes back into this thing. Okay. But I don't mind as long as I get to see whatever you want to lock into here. If anything, I can leech life to get myself back some HP. And I think that should prevent this, prevent a Thunderbolt from being a 2KO. I don't think he knows yet how... Go, goes for the Vault Switch. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I don't think he knows yet just how specially defensive I am, but now he definitely sees how specially defensive I am. Um, and yeah, that Volt Switch is pretty much right in line with, with Scarf damage, so yeah, he's almost definitely Scarfed. Could be going into the Skarmory, I doubt, well no, because I could be Fire Lashing. Fire Lashing is the most likely scenario that I'm going for here. But now the onus is on me to keep this thing healthy with, with, um, Vaporeon, so I'm gonna have to work on that, but... Overall, I have to imagine this thing is going to be Scarfed. We do get HP back with Leech Life, so that's going to be huge for the longer run. Um, but uh, I think I want to do this. I think I want to do this. Because I don't mind most things that this thing would want to go for, even if this thing is Banded Crunch and it's kind of close to a 2-hit, if not a straight-up 2-hit. Yeah, I, yeah I, I don't want to give him the momentum in this situation. Goes into this thing... Um, but now with the Vaporeon, I can protect and see what he wants to lock himself into, and, um, we can just go from there. We can just go from there. We do have to think a lot about timer, and I actually did that completely on, on autopilot. I didn't even read protect. I just thought that I remembered that protect was in the final slot. Um, that was kind of scary if, if I was wrong for whatever reason. Let's go for the Volt Switch. Let's go for the Volt Switch. I think... No, I think I just throw a Wish up in the air. I think I just throw a Wish up in the air. Yeah, yeah, because he's going to hard switch for sure, for sure. Goes into the Kinkelder. I am max defense and I am going to get half my HP back, but Kinkelder is strong as a mother bugger. Kinkelder is really strong. Close combat is going to do roughly 70%. But he would have to click... Hmm. This is where I would unironically go for flip turn if I had it. But I think I just click Scald here, right? For the damage? Oh no, I'm, I was looking at the wrong Mon. I think even just Scalding here is worth the damage here. I could protect on the next turn, get a, get some crumb HP back. He gets uh, a, the, the, a little bit of chip. We should take this facade okay, not great, but we get the wish back, we get leftovers back. We can protect for a little bit of chip and for, um, and for more leftovers, and we are in a very interesting position. Actually, I can... I can Scald again, and it'll be very close to a KO. However, that does leave me quite soft to the Bear Skewda. And I don't have a Scarfer on this team. I don't have a Scarfer on this team. So if I... If I was sure that I could just KO this Kinkelder, then I would make that play 100% of the time, but I'm not certain of that at all. I'm not certain of that at all. I think... Oh, I think I just have to Scald here. Yeah, I think I just have to Scald here. I don't think he gets into back enough HP where... Oh, that's just a KO. That's huge. That's huge. We didn't even need to crit or anything. That is absolutely huge. That is unspeakably huge. And we're back up to complete full. That's incredibly huge. I'm I'm so proud of Vaporeon. That was incredibly huge. I cannot overstate how huge that is. I was genuinely terrified that he would uh, take that. Goes into this thing, but I can protect again, and I don't think it's this is ever going to be the biggest issue in the world. Um, I could just figure out however to manage this. And we can go from there. We can go from there. Goes for the Volt Switch, that's totally fine. I think he pulls a double here, but I don't know how to quite how to play off of that. I think I might want to click Wish. What does he have left? It's just, um... Has the Skarmory up still. 
So that's a little bit tough. I mean, I probably click Wish, right? Yeah, I'm gonna click Wish. We'll see if he Volt Switches again. I think, yeah, okay, that's fair. Ew, that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. But, we can kind of, um, we can kind of play off of whatever wants to come in. Bring to the Skarm, that's totally fair. He might want to get up, um, actually, I, yeah, I think I, I think I straight up just click, uh, click Scald here. I think, I, I think if anything, he wouldn't mind just getting up Hazards. I think... The only play that I'd be super scared of is Body Press, and even then, I I am Max Defense uh, Vaporeon. Pulls a double. Okay, that's very interesting. And I can... What did he expect me to do? What did he expect me to do? Maybe he expect me to protect? I don't know. I don't quite know. But regardless, I have to protect again. Like, that's not that much of a question. I am super curious how much a body press is doing, is looking to do to me. Body press to Vaporeon. Oh, not a whole lot at all. And yeah, this time I'm just going to make the play. He, this could be super um, telegraphed. At this point, I don't think I mind a whole ton. Um... And yeah, he and yeah, he didn't switch because I switched out first. We know that he's going for in, for a thunderbolt. Uh, I can potentially get up hazards, which would be huge, even at this late in the game. Uh, I don't really have anything else I would want to do here. He could go into the bear scuda. I'm not the most concerned about the bear scuda. And we can kind of start to go from there. If anything, I click, um, I click Super Fang on this turn, and I should be reasonably okay to kind of, um, play, uh, play some kind of a hazard game if I have to, just figure something out in this scenario. Even if I do get Rocky Helmeted, it's not the worst thing in the world, I can deal with it, but just keeping this thing reasonably low is important for me. I'm gonna, uh, I need to try to avoid bringing in the Coco. He, he probably did that expecting my Centaurus to want to come in, but I don't have to quite yet, because I can weaken this thing a little bit for now. You could expect it to want to come in now, but I think, if anything, I would give up this thing before I do, I do that ever. No, no, this is probably just fine, right? Uh, it'd be... Mm. Let me think this through. I'll probably make this play of anything, right? Ugh, it's tough. I think maybe I do this in Volt Switch. Ooh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. I think, I, I think I've talked myself into it because I think... The two most likely scenarios are he's fa he should be faster than me, so so he shouldn't have attacked. Is either Brave Birds and I may and I maybe take when he body presses or he defogs. In either scenario, I just volt switch and I um am in a really solid position. Or he roosts, right? I think those are the most um those are the most likely scenarios. He does roost and I can very freely volt switch. Um, but again, I'm always going to make it difficult for him as long as uh, the combination of Sand Slash and and uh, Sand Scorch are up. And Volt Switching is always going to put me in the best position possible because I'm not taking any Rocky Helmet. I can weaken this thing quite a bit and I can uh, kind of m continue to maneuver myself a little bit. Uh, I think... I think I made myself adamant, which I probably shouldn't have, looking back at it. But, um... 
regardless. This is probably the best play I have available. No, 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 but this is probably the best play I have available to me. No, 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 it's not. It's, it's really not. I think this is, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because um, I can protect on, on... If he makes any type of play, I can protect on either the... On... On... On either switch in and kind of play off of my immunities, I'm going to wish for sure. I don't even th yeah I don't even think it's worth KOing this thing yet. Um, he could attack, he could defog, he could well roosting would be pretty bad actually. I yeah, and I made this thing faster specifically for these situations. Yeah, that was that's a pretty rough play I just made. It's a pretty rough play I just made, in all, in all honesty. I should have thought that through a little bit better. I should have thought that through a little bit better. But I could pass off a wish to something. I could do this. No, but that gives... That would potentially give... Uh... Yeah. I guess... I guess Scaldburn would be best case scenario. I could try to wish pass a little bit more, but overall, that does a lot more damage than I would have expected. Was that a crit? It goes for a spike. That's fair. That's totally fair. That's totally, totally fair. But I do get a KO here, which is ultimately going to be where I want to be. I'm not going to make the same mistake twice, but I do end up this interaction with ma with full HP, which is where I wanted to end up. And I do have to deal with spikes, but I think my team is okay enough where spikes isn't going to be a game loser here. Um, and the electricity goes away, which is also sizable for me here. He could wear down my team. He could wear down my team. I'm just going to protect. I mean, there's no real reason to do anything else, right? Uh, I think if anything, I think if anything, I can probably, huh, I'm gonna Toxic, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, 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 this makes sense in my head, because he's either gonna switch out, in which case I get to wear this thing down, or he's gonna stay in, I take a hit, and... And I and I wear down again. What what's in front of me? I I, I can protect. I, I know he's scarf, so I can maneuver. I I have options available to me. So this just overall makes the most amount of sense to me. And now I can throw a wish up in the air. He either goes back into the circuitry, and I can play off of that. Um. Or I can protect in front of this thing. If he goes for banded crunch, I think it's a, I think it's closer to hit. But with the wish up in the air and the protect, I think I always kind of make it out of here. Hmm. Yeah, close combat's what I meant. Yeah, um, it, it is closer to hit. This thing's probably banded. Almost definitely banded. I'm, I'm pretty positive. These are the calcs that I ran beforehand, but, um... But, yeah, this is kind of, um, where I expect it to be. I think... I think, yeah, just Scalding covers both things here, right? Scalding, scalding picks up a KO here, and or picks up a KO on the... Yeah, that's fine. Uh, it is dangerously close to a KO, but but yeah, now but yeah, now no matter what, whatever um, he wants to lock himself into, I can play off of it, and we theoretically win a game. It's an unintentional six zero. Okay, so I mean, I, I guess I probably should address the fact that it's an unintentional six zero. Um, I I zero. I, I want anybody watching to know zero percent of me intentionally went for this six zero. But, uh, if you, but I was always in such a bad position, right? If I ever gave Zerkatry a, a chance into this match, then Zerkatry would have done what it needed to. So I had to play extremely carefully in order to not give him any sacks, because any sacks would allow this Zerkatry to snowball in a way that I just couldn't allow, right? So, um, it isn't, it is an unintentional 6-0. 
Uh, I don't feel great about it. I don't feel great about how much I preserved Mons because, uh, just to get the 6-0 because um, that wasn't really how I intended to play this. But uh, I guess it's with my apologies, this is how this game had to kind of end here, right? Uh, I don't even know if I take a hit. I guess I should just check that out, right? Because theoretically, this would be a more merciful way to, to kind of end the game. Uh, let's just see modest. I actually think this is timid, but I just want to check modest. Modest should. Ugh, modest has a chance. I think timid never has a chance. Yeah. Ugh. But at this point, heck it. I. I mean. I mean. I think the center score should be safe regardless. I'm almost positive this thing is timid. If it's not, I'm gonna look dumb. Okay, we do take it. And uh, skull should just end out the game. Uh, Vaporeon bailed me out once again, and again, I really didn't want to play the game that I, it, it, this way, and 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 even now, you see how concerned I was, uh, thinking that if I if I gave him the, the Vaporeon in this moment, that he would somehow be, be, be able to snowball with, with Beast Boosts, and I'd be like, and, 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 and I'd end up losing the game somehow. This thing is incredibly scary, and I don't know, something crazy could happen, he could get to plus one and then crit my Senna Scorch and it does like a million damage, I don't know. Maybe I played it overly cautiously, if I did, I'm sorry, just kind of, I felt like I felt like I had to play this game. But once again, thank you so, so much to my opponent for um, being able to play me early, uh, just to make everything happen here. And he did actually make transactions, which will be um, available to him soon. He did agree to play me because I already kind of pre-built a team. Just again, thank you so much and I'm so, so sorry for how this went down. But with that, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of the UPBA as well as more weeks of the UBL, both of which I've just had a blast. Yeah, with that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, out.